So Peter Grier has asked, uh, he's got a product, he wants to demo it. He's got a group of potential customers who are the right audience. Um, how do you show the product without you know, bi biasing them? How do you adhere to the mom test? How do you set up the product demo to avoid biases? A couple comments on this. Um, first, you need to make sure you've got your foundational understanding already in place. So questions like, does the customer even care? Do they have this problem? What are they already doing and why? If you introduce the product, you've eliminated your ability to gain meaningful answers to those questions. So you want to get them first, um, either in a separate conversation from different people, whatever, or at the beginning of this conversation. Fine, but let's assume that you've already done that. You understand what your customers are doing and why. Um, there's a couple different angles to the customer demo. Um, first, there's different things that you can learn from a product demo. There's, do they care? And is this the right product for them? You know, have I built the right thing in the right way? And then secondly, assuming they care, uh, does it work for them? Can they understand it? Can they use it? Does it achieve their goals? The usability questions. For the usability questions, don't worry about the mom test. Don't worry about biased questions. Don't worry about anything that I say. Um, just follow the user testing world. Read Rocket Surgery Made Easy by Steve Krug. Uh, read about user testing ask the customer to do a task, then just stay silent, watch them do it, write down where they get stuck, write down where they get confused. Uh, don't try to fix their understanding, just really humbly accept that like, hey, they misunderstood it, that's my problem, and I'm gonna deal with that. Um, user testing's great, it's a compliment to customer development, they're not competitors, they solve different problems. Um, in terms of have I built the right product to solve the problem, the, the customer's needs, to tick their boxes, to achieve their goals, um, that's a little fuzzier. So there you're gonna use the commitments idea from the mom test. Um, what you're gonna do is you'll do a product demo. Everyone's good at product demos. Salespeople are good at product demos. Tech people are good at product demos. Everyone loves showing off their product. It's super easy. Um, I would recommend in general to uh, err on the side of humility about your product. If you can keep it a little bit rougher, if you can say like, hey, you know, we're still working on this. Uh, you know, it's a rough version. We know it's a bit broken. Like we're still trying to improve it. The more you can show them that you're accepting that it's not perfect, the more able you're going to be to receive negative feedback, which is super helpful. Um, so you take that, but that's not the main point. You know, like if you can get some useful negative feedback along the way, bonus. But mostly what you're doing is you're demoing the product, you're describing the product, you're pitching the product, whatever your style is. And then at the end, you're gonna ask for some uh, commitment. So normally it's um, either a next meeting or conversation with a clear purpose and outcome. So like, hey, you know, like, oh, it seems like you were pretty excited about this demo. Can we talk again in two weeks um, and go through how we can integrate this with your team? That'd be like a B2B example. Uh, with an individual, it might be more like reputational where you go, <laughs> it might be more reputational where you go like, hey, we're, uh, you know, it seems like you're super excited about this. Like, do you know other people who would also be excited about this? You know, if there's two or three of you, we'd love to give you a group discount uh, or bring you all in early and give you some sort of early premium access. Uh, you'd want to plan these commitment asks in advance because sometimes they're a little bit creative. It is not always obvious what the right thing to ask for. But importantly, you're not trying to strong arm or trick people. Uh, you're not trying to say like, come on, you got to do it. You know, I'm an awesome salesperson. You got to like, if you're doing that, you're shooting yourself in the foot because what you're doing is you're concealing the signal, which you're searching for. Uh, you're trying to figure out, does this person care enough for me to gamble the next five to 10 years of my life on building this business? Uh, if you want to strong arm a person to lie to yourself about that risk equation, that's like, that's crazy, right? Like you shouldn't be trying to get an extra $10 or $10,000 or any number of dollars in the short term, because what matters is the next 10 years. And so in my view, I'm trying to influence my customers, my early customers as little as possible. I'm just trying to be like, hey, do you really care? If so, prove it to me. You know, here's an opportunity for you to give me your time, your reputation, your money, whatever it is. Um, if it's an enterprise, like you're selling into a big business or a government, they can also give you secrets about their buying process. Uh, here's how legal works. Here's how procurement works. 
um, any of that stuff shows you that they're excited. Uh, and that allows then you as the entrepreneur to be like, okay, I'm willing now because I've got this evidence of excitement from my customers. I'm willing to devote the next half decade or decade to this project because I know that people want it. Um, so that's the stuff I'm looking for. First, sort out your foundations from basic mom test, customer discovery, whatever. Ask about their life. Don't pitch your idea. Once you've got that foundation in place, a split off. What am I trying to learn? Is it about usability? Use user testing. User testing is amazing. Uh, is it about like, is this right? Do they care? Will they pay me? Will they use it? Um, if you can use commitments, uh, if you can't use commitments, because for example, let's say it was a game uh, or it's a consumer app. There's just kind of a nice to have It's a to-do to -do list. It's hard to get advanced payments or commitments for that sort of product. So in those cases, what you look to do is you look to build a quick and simple prototype, get it into people's hands, watch the analytics. If the analytics are great, congratulations, you're rich. If the analytics are bad, well, then you fire up some conversations with your most active and inactive users, and you try to figure out the reasons behind their usage and inactivity. Uh, so there's different strategies. Um, like the mom test is not a religion. It doesn't solve every problem. It's a tool that you should have in your toolkit. Uh, and you put it alongside user testing, alongside analytics, alongside you know your sales, all the other uh, tools that you've got in your product toolkit. So hopefully that's useful. If you've got other questions, shoot them over to me, Twitter, email, Rob Fitz, Rob at robfitz.com. And uh, I, I always like chatting about Custev. <laughs>